Northern Hemisphere of Mars, the Marth Phallus area, is important because of the diversity of the mineral signatures that you see. The great channel that cuts across this was carved by water, but even the highlands here were affected by water. In the craters that are there, we see different mineral signatures in the different layers, indicating the episodic activity of water at the planet or the mixing of soils by impacts in the early history of Mars. In the southern hemisphere of Mars, holding crater 60 miles across is very interesting because there is a channel that goes into the crater, and here you're looking at the front of that, the delta, indicating that water once flowed into the crater, ponding as an inland sea or lake, and then breached the far wall and ran out, leaving layers. In those layers, we expect to find evidence of the past chemistry, the action of water, how long it was there, they may also have the potential to have preserved biosignatures, that is, evidence of past life, if life had ever developed on the planet and flourished in this area. The outstanding characteristic of Eberswald Crater, the thing that calls out to land in this area, is that it has a delta formation like that of the Mississippi River, in which it's obvious that material has flowed in a channel out of the highlands down into this crater and formed a delta formation, highly structured and layered, meaning that there were many episodes of water flowing into the crater. Those layers could be preserving not only the history of this area as it formed over time in Mars and the activity of water on its surface, but it's the kind of formation that could also preserve evidence of past life if that life had developed on the planet. Gale Crater in the southern hemisphere of Mars near the equator is an attractive landing site because it's a very deep crater, more than three miles deep, and yet at one time it must have been completely filled because its central mound actually extends above the crater rim today. Evident in here are many different kinds of minerals, sulfates, sediments, clay materials that indicated the action of water, and because of that action of water, the possibility that it may have preserved evidence of past life. You can see the tortured ground that is there, the layers, the many buttes and mesas that poke up above this. The scale of these things is such that we're looking across a couple of miles of territory there is no vertical exaggeration in the stereo image made by taking images at separate times on separate orbits. Some of these buttes extend up a football field in size. Fault systems that were produced by earthquakes, in this case Mars quakes, give us clues as to whether this is material that was eroded away or actually whether it was deposited and then eroded later. view that was formed from two images forming a stereo pair. As you can see, water ponded on the terraces and then it overflowed and ran down to the next terrace. If you look at the rim of the crater, you see channels that run right up to the top. So these aren't springs, this must have been rainfall that carved this part of the planet. We're going to use that image to zoom in and see what it would look like from the rover's point of view if it were on the edge of the crater looking out over it and then match that with an image that was actually taken from the rover opportunity on the Mars surface. <laughs> 